Go, go, caterpillar. Looking for stuff to eat. YouTube will probably demonetize this because reasons. Caterpillars are too woke. Look at that caterpillar go. Get right in his face. Enhance. Enhance. Hey everyone, welcome back to the range. My name is Matt. You came here for another standard ammunition test. And what do I have in store for you today? A blast from the past from Norinco 762 by 51 millimeters or 308 Winchester. This is an M80 ball equivalent. This is all the way back from the early 90s before I think Bill Clinton banned all Chinese ammo import from our beautiful country. Let's throw him on the table and see what we're going to do today. As with all of our ammo testing, I try to bring out a few different barrel lengths so that we have that good spread of velocity and, and information. I have a 12 and a half inch, a 16 and 22. We have our Pro Chrono Digital DLX for our chronograph. It's about 70 to maybe 75 degrees outside today, overcast, a little bit of wind, but a really good day for shooting besides the mosquitoes. As mentioned, our Norinco is from the early 90s, right before that it was banned from import. I know there's a couple variation in boxing, this particular green one, and then there's a, I think, white and black one that says China Sport on it. It is a steel case, Bird and Prime. It has a copper wash or some kind of wash on the jacket to help prevent corrosion and aid in a little bit of uh, ease of feeding. You will get dirty hands from handling it. Without further ado, let's see what this stuff's made of. We'll start with our shortest barrel length, which is our 12 and a half inch SBR. This is a Palmetto State Armory build, various Magpul furniture, Radeon ambidextrous charging handle, our battle arms, ambi safety selectors as well. See if we get some good muzzle flash out of this. We've got the JMAC Customs Loud and Flashy 30 up front. Not too bad, I didn't notice any muzzle flash coming off that. And now for our 16 inch, this is our CZ 557 Urban Counter Sniper. Got a very heavy one in 10 twist barrel on there. Yankee Hill three port muzzle brake Vortex 16 power optic on there. Feeds from a double stack 10 round proprietary box magazine. Doesn't like me running the bolt very slow left-handed but uh, I didn't get a velocity reading off that might be a little on the oh I guess I did get a velocity reading off that chronograph reconnected got to run the bolt faster Would help if I'm right handed, you know. Okay. Yeah, we got all twenty, we got all ten. I wonder if we'll see over 2,700 in our 22 inch. And finally, our 22 inch, this is from Thompson Center. This is their compass, their budget bolt gun. 
has a Yankee Hill three port QD muzzle brake up front, three by nine Redfield scope on there, feeds from a rotary magazine that I can never get five rounds in there. This is four and it doesn't want to feed very well. Getting good velocity off this though. Twenty-seven ninety-eight. Ooh, almost twenty-eight hundred feet per second. Me likey. Twenty-eight twenty. Ooh. The Caldwell bipod isn't the greatest on this thing. 2856. I wonder how much we'd see with the suppressor on there. This bipod. Yeah. Not the greatest. Not too bad, over 2,800 feet per second. Let's throw the suppressor on there because I have enough of this left and see what we get velocity wise out of that. We've mounted our Yankee Hill Machines Phantom M2 30 cal suppressor on there. Let's see how much we gain from this combo. Come on little boy, get in there. Gaining too much. About the same, it looks like. Dun, dun, dun. Four more, folks. Four more. Out with one magazine, in with another. Powder smells a little different than what I'm used to. Definitely a little stinky powder. I don't know if I got a velocity off that one, but close enough. Pretty much about the same, no velocity gain with the suppressor on this particular load in this combo. Here is our Norinco 762 by 51 green box at 200 yards in the TC Compass 22 inch barrel, three by nine scope, JK armament rifle kit, 2.329 inches. Not a bad group at all. It's about 70 degrees outside today. Very calm, overcast. You can see the target really well. I'm not going to complain about that from a steel case loading. Well, everyone, that about concludes our testing for our steel case 762 by 51 millimeter from Norinco. We had good full power M80 ball velocities out of this. Accuracy wise, wasn't too bad. We did shoot some out of the 16 inch, but those groups were probably a little atrocious for me to even admit. Usually I get better results with a one in 12 twist with our like lighter than 150 grain loads. One of the reasons that I started to do ammunition testing and continue to do it on the channel is I like to hunt out a lot of this vintage ammo, you know, from the 50s on up through the 90s. And I like to test it and either prove or disprove any myths and lore that tend to be on the internet about it. A lot of the message boards and things that started, you know, in the late 90s and early 2000s where people were testing some of this ammunition, that data is gone or there is no data on it. So that if I can provide that to you in a video format 
and you know, 10, 15, 20 years down the line, you're finding some of this at a garage sale or in somebody's estate sale and you're curious on what it can do or can't do, you can hop on the internet and if YouTube's still there, you've got your data. It's about time for me to pack up and get the heck out of here. As I close out all my videos, I take a moment to thank all those who helped make these possible. Number one is my Patreon supporters and number two is you all for watching. Until next time, I'll catch you at the range. Well, everyone, that about concludes our testing of our... Well, everyone...